Hello, film fans. Welcome to the Film vs. Film podcast. Spoiler special episode. My name is Martin Harries, your host. On this episode, we are talking plot lines, characters, and all things spoilerific. You have been warned. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a five star review and subscribe. Hello, Podaroonies or Podsters, if you prefer. We are back for 2024. And no, we are not back with a regular episode. We are returning with a spoiler special on, let's face it, people, the best film of 2023 featuring a fishman. Uh, I think that's quite accurate to say. And of course, I am not alone. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm joined by Lee again from the Lights Camera Rant, our last guest from our last episode. Now our first guest for 2024. Hello, Lee. How are you? Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, happy to be your last guest and your first guest for the year. Good, good. As always, man, thank you so much for having me. And you couldn't be more right. The uh, Fishman movie of the year for two, <laughs> for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> It was that long, apparently. It felt longer, but... Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. But when you compare that to Shazam 2, uh, I felt like this was, a lot, <laughs> this was a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bother with that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I don't think many people did. No, no. <laughs> Big flop. <laughs> Big flop. I do like Zachary yeah. Levy, though. I think he's great at Shazam, but yeah, I didn't really bother with that one. Um, Lee... People might know already, but tell us about your podcast and where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on wherever you get your local podcasts, a- Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, and as always, we talk about the latest in movies, TV shows and video games uh, to help everyone keep up to, di- up to date. And usually it's majority of it's just a lot of ranting and me complaining. Yeah, we <laughs> might get some ranting today, uh, possibly. Yeah, basically to keep me warm and (laughs) Lee cold. (laughs) So we are talking Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom then. What were your initial reactions to this one then, Lee? I went into this with very low expectations, Um, as you would have heard as well. This this was chopped up by Warner Brothers reshoots. Mm. Uh, different cuts of the film, apparently early reactions, uh, test screenings were received poorly. Uh, and not to mention, we were meant to get this actually a year ago. And we know going into this was this was going to be the last DCEU film mm. in this universe. So it wasn't going to connect to anything, which it doesn't. My initial reaction to this was I thought that it was decent and it was a lot more coherent than all the DC films that we got this year. Sorry, last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comparing it to like The Flash. Yeah, that wasn't... I mean, the CG in that was really poor at times. It was rough. Yeah. I mean, even with this one, still not great, to be honest, at times. But I think for me, like, again, yeah, I, I kept my expectations really low. Very low, very low. I still had a good time. <laughs> yeah, underwater low. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I still had a good time. Like, there's some really kind of really interesting design elements here. I'm a big like design guy in movies, so I really enjoyed that stuff. Like the story, some of it makes little to no sense <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> there's some really interesting influences from other big s- franchises, which I found really interesting, and there's some really weird. Mm-hmm. Marvel references? I don't know whether you saw that, which I found really yes. odd and weird. I'm like, surely you want some DCEU references in here, not Marvel ones, but sure, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> like, they've got Spirit in the Sky like playing a few times. I'm like, that is synonymous with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Why is this playing <laughs> in this movie? That made, yeah. sense. that made no sense. And then you've got Randall Park in the film. Yeah, he's a great actor, but like, he's been in like two... Well, he's been in um, the Ant Man films, the Ant Man sequels, and WandaVision. WandaVision. Yeah, so that was a kind of a weird choice for an actor. He's great, but it, it was just a bit off putting. I'm like, hang on, that's I know you, the dude from Marvel. <laughs> I did say to my friend, like, did did James Wan just watch Iron Man and Black Panther before finishing this film in Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, 
It's like that guy looks amazing. I have to have him in my Aquaman sequel. And I think the other major issue I had with this is just obviously there was a lot of problems. Like you have, as you've already mentioned, a lot of reshoots. I think at one point both Batmans were supposed to be in this film, like Ben Affleck and yep. Michael Keaton, which sounds wild. And and obviously you've got the Amber Heard problem, so it's kind of funny with her as well, with the fact that you can clearly tell there's so many scenes like chopped out here where she was supposed to be in it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh she was in it a lot more than I expected it to be. Yeah. Uh that was probably my most thing is but she was in it just enough to push the story. Yeah. But no more. No more, and that's it. Yeah. No more character stuff. She just needs to be here to be a mum. That's it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly right. Just need your mum scenes. Yeah. Um, and, of course, that you'd be protecting your city with your mother-in-law. Yeah. But that's about it. I feel like as well, I don't know if this is kind of a, an intentional thing, but it would be absolutely hilarious if it was. I just found, like, because she can manipulate water, right, in her powers, which is a cool power, but I found, like... <laughs> The CG was really bad when she was doing her powers. I don't know if they, they did that on purpose. That would be hilarious if the F- FX guys did that on purpose. Didn't finish her scene. I ah, can't be asked with her uh, CG effects for her character. She's a bitch. Yeah. yeah. You're wrong, Johnny, so I'm not helping you. Yeah. But I think the other issue I had was the fact that is the the first film was felt so epic and so incredible like yes it's goofy and crazy but that's kind of sometimes what you want with superhero films like really going Mm. to push the boat out and james one like really went for it in that first film i mean it made an Mm. incredible amount of money that first one a billion dollars a billion dollars which is insane i'm like i mean the internet was literally, and TV shows, pop culture was literally taking the piss out of Aquaman for years. <laughs> and then this film, like, completely, like, changes the narrative on this particular character mm. with that first film. And then this film just feels like a damp squid uh, <laughs> in comparison, just in terms of its scale and its ambition, which I guess it's difficult anyway from the first film, but surely you've got to try and match that. I didn't feel like they really attempted to try and match that scale. No, I I agree. Like, this seemed... didn't seem like they really brought anything new to the table. I'm like, you're rehashing... I think you'd be wrong. Like, Black Manta is a very significant villain yeah. in the Aquaman comics. But I'm like, this felt to me I'm like, you're just kind of like, oh, we're just going to use him again. And, you know, we're going to get Norm back uh, into this. But we're not really going to expand a whole lot. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, global warming in a kingdom that apparently no one told anybody about that's full of zombies. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of, like, Marvel storylines that we've kind of seen already in the films. Like, with that, Hmm. that's kind of reminded me a lot of Thor Ragnarok, where Odin erases the existence of Hela and her, her zombie army mm. and they basically borrowed that for this one as well and you've got Wakanda Forever in there as well like the, I think mm. they did that really well with the debate of whether it should be involved yeah Namor should reveal himself to the outside world or whatever that was some really interesting stuff and obviously they use that here whereas Aquaman Arthur Curry is trying to do that uh, and convince mm. the <laughs> atlantis council or whatever to reveal themselves a lot of that stuff felt very weak compared to wakanda forever yeah and but obviously in wakanda forever as well they don't really close that story that's still very open who knows whether we'll find out answers about whether yeah, yeah. namor's world i can't remember what the, what it's called but namor's world because obviously it's atlantis in in the marvel comics but yeah Talakan. Uh whether they'll, you know, reveal themselves in, in the MCU. I, I doubt it, to be honest, whether they'll bring that story back in future Black Panther movies. I don't know, but we'll have to wait a bloody long time, I think. <laughs> well, at this rate with everything getting delayed, or people yeah. people getting recast before getting shot yeah. starting shooting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I I agree with you, like not to compare, compare, but like that last scene. 
in the movie, I'm like, I've seen all this. Yeah. And I've seen this recently. Like, you're not bringing anything. Like, it fits the story, but I feel like you could have done this in a different way because I'm like, surely you shot this going, I've seen this before. Mm. Yeah. It oozes reshoots, that last scene, definitely. <laughs> yeah. This, that, is, that is the worst CGI in the entire movie, to my point. Really? When he's standing in front of oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, New York, I'm like, that's bad. It looks worse than what it does when you're underwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't that when you've got, like, a really bright CGI suit and it's kind of orange chain mail, uh, and standing next to him is a fish dude <laughs> with the guy losing his uh, claw. Yeah. Uh, it just looks kind of unintentionally funny <laughs> as well. <laughs> and and like all the government guys are all in suits as well. So that doesn't really help looking all very serious. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we, we believe what Aquaman is saying, even yeah. though he looks ridiculous. <laughs> even what he's wearing. Like, yeah. I believe you. Because, yeah, you know, Atlanteans... Uh, one of the most powerful forces, mm. which to me, I'm like, how doesn't anyone know about Atlantis with Aquaman? Yeah, I guess they didn't watch Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, there's just a guy with a giant pitchfork. I'm like, oh, must be one of Batman's. <laughs> but, <laughs> must be one of Batman's uh, sidekicks or something. Yeah. Yeah, it m- must be. But, like, did you notice that as well? Isn't, there was no... There was no connection to, there was no mention of any other Justice League. There was no mention of anything prior like this. It was just a straight up sequel to that first Aquaman. Yeah, which I think is a real shame, to be honest, because going into it, and the studio knew this as well, with the reshoots, is that this is going to be the last DCEU film before James Gunn takes over and deletes the E. And they, they, they felt like no celebration of the films because there are. Let's not be too harsh on the DCU. There are some good films in there. Aquaman mm. being one. I you know it, the first Wonder Woman. Yeah, the first Wonder Woman is fantastic. Probably my favorite uh, DCU film. You know, Man of Steel has its problems, but it's still pretty yes. good. It set the tone for this universe. But there's been some real duds as well, like. Wonder Woman sequel, nineteen eighty four. Oh my god, yes. that was bad. Really, really poor. <laughs> what annoys me is that you have a whole bunch of people in a writing room, and like you go, we have one of the most powerful women on the planet, yeah, a goddess who can literally break necks mm. and take names. But the best story we have is she fights a wishing stone. <laughs> yeah. And- yeah. I'm like, is that really, out of her entire Rogue's yeah. Gallery, is that really the best story we could do? Yeah, I think they were just trying to be too clever for their own good and too nuanced for their own good, really, which was a shame with that film. Yeah, so there are some <laughs> good movies, and it, hmm. it's just a shame it's... that we didn't get... It would have, would have been nice to just have a few jokes in there about like the other Justice, Justice League members or a few little cameos here and there. That would have been nice, mm. but I so that was kind of a strange decision. Maybe they couldn't get the actors because mm. of scheduling or whatever. But but then Aquaman was in Flash. But I then again, they they really would they probably would even really want Flash to come back. <laughs> no, no, yeah, another problematic actor. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no. If they were shooting in Hawaii too. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Probably would invite him. No. <laughs> But why take out the Batman scenes if it, it yeah. didn't continue to anything? That would have been awesome. Like, I'm a big fan of... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of Batfleck in terms of the design stuff, and I think Ben Affleck's a great actor for Bruce Wayne. Like, I'm not a big mm. fan of, like, Batman killing people, and, like, he literally has a rifle in a few scenes of the Justice League film. It's just like, where? <laughs> Batman doesn't use mm. guns? What the fuck? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Batflick was uh, to me was what the MVP of the Flash. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that motorcycle hey. chase was was pretty cool. Yeah, that was good. And I'm like, and to me, after I saw that, I'm like, this is what I would love to see. And what that Batman, yeah, only his Batflick movie would have been. Mm. But even if you do have my, even if they just didn't use him and we use Michael Keaton because yeah. we saw him in the Flash, yeah. I don't think a lot of people would have been like, 
Well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't think people would really care too much. I wouldn't anyway if we saw Keaton again in this film. I'm like, they could work out some sort of underwater portal or something. <laughs> Time, time warp portal. Yeah, it makes sense. They, they've got magicians underwater, haven't they? Yeah, Atlantis. <laughs> they've got everything else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it in a bit more detail then for this one with the scenes and the characters. So, like the opening action scene where like Arthur is basically explaining what his life is like now is is fine. Like we've seen that sort of thing done way better in other movies, but I loved how James Wan does like the action scene with the pirates on the container ship where yeah. Aquaman is like running and jumping and about to punch everyone at the same time with his trident. Uh but then we cut to him and his baby <laughs> playing with action figures. That was great for me. That was funny. Um, kind of showed a lot of great confidence to the fact that they're not relying. I mean, there's there's a few punches and kicks in rain and slow mo. That was kind of cool to see on that ship, but mm. I felt it showed some cool confidence from James Wan to really underplay the action there. But then it's just disappointing that there's not a lot of like great confidence in the direction from Wan later on in the movie, which is a shame. No, and but and for me, like I thought that action scene was good, and I even at the which we'll get into, even while at the end, the Black Manta. Yeah, that was really yeah, good. The, yeah, that, that last one felt like that, I stripped straight from a comic book, yeah. that last fight between those two. I will admit, you know, Jason Moe was the best person to play Aquaman. Oh, yeah. And he says it straight, straight off the bat, yeah. Yes, I talk to fish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're very aware, I feel like, with these films that Aquaman is kind of a bit of a silly um, superhero compared to people like Spider-Man and Batman and things. So they do, mm-hmm. like, tonally, this works really well in its yes. tone. It's just the stories and some of the characters which are a problem here especially in this one and i think um the opening sequence in antarctica with randall park with the tentacle monster that was pretty cool as i always say if you've got tentacles in your movie it's an automatic improvement for me (laughs) uh i I know a particular culture would probably agree with you that on that too (laughs) (laughs) but no that was very like that was very like james one's horror kicking in that you could sense that. Yeah, definitely. His sh- horror skills coming through there. And I, to be honest with you, I actually completely forgot about Randall Park. <laughs> was in the, it was in the, uh, cam- I'm pretty sure it was the cameo scene or he was at the last bit of the first Aquaman. Was he in that one? All oh, right. Okay. I don't remember. Because he, he saved, yeah, well, that's, I was the same. I was like, where did you come from? Yeah. I was like, oh, that's right. You saved Black Man to right at the end. Oh, okay. I really need to rewatch the first one. It is a fun movie, the first one, I must say. Yeah. It is. Because it goes crazy, it's like, fuck it, let's have octopuses playing drums, let's have a giant kraken mm. played by Julie Andrews. There you go. Julie Andrews. That's it, yeah. <laughs> you can stop right. screaming at, and- <laughs> at your uh, headphones now, or your, or your YouTube <laughs> screen, as we're now on YouTube. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And William Defoe, which yeah. is really gutting that he couldn't come back for this one, which was for, again, scheduling conflicts why he couldn't come back. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing it's because of Nos- Nosferatu. I'm not really complaining about that. I'm like, yep, yeah, you have to do that movie. <laughs> yeah. Instead of acting. Vanilla Fishman. Yeah. Or Amazing Horror Film. Yeah. Um, not a difficult decision. Um, yeah. And Beetlejuice too. Yes, definitely. It could be that as well. Yeah. That was one part I was like, oh, I do wish he was a little bit in it because he did play such a big role of him being his mentor. And then just to be like, yeah, you die because of disease. (laughs) Yeah, I really, I really miss him anyway. Yeah. I mean, he's good in like everything. He's never done a bad performance. He always understands the mission. Absolutely. Like, look at Spider Man No Way Home. Yeah, I mean, the guy, I mean, he's in his 60s now, mid-60s, yeah. and he insisted on doing all his own stunts for No Way Home, which is pretty awesome for that film. Yep, and the and the balls that apparently he's, when they asked him, he's like, I don't want a cameo. I, I want to be... In the movie. Yeah, I want to be in the movie. I want to F up Spider-Man again. <laughs> 
Good and proper this <laughs> <Sure>. time. <laughs> yeah, proper, proper then. Yeah, I, I rewatched that over Christmas, actually. Technically a Christmas film. It is. It ends at Christmas <laughs> when it's all snowy and nice. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it is. And how do you find it on the rewatch? Still the same kind of... Yeah, I think... Enjoyment? I mean, there's like a lot of plot holes <laughs> really up the wazoo, frankly, but it doesn't really matter because like a lot of the character stuff and there's just so many joyful moments in that film. It's just like, I'm having an amazing time. I really don't care about the plot holes. This is so good. <laughs> out of way. Out of the way. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, back to Aquaman, yeah. though. Uh, yeah. I, back to Fishman 2. Yes. <laughs> they really should have gone with that title. That would have been cool. Fishman 2, Global Warming. <laughs> yeah. So Black Manta's ship designs, I kind of really liked. I mean, the fact that it's literally shaped like a hammerhead shark was awesome to me. <laughs> I was like, this is what I want. Yes. <laughs> like very retro 60s inspired for me. Yes. By far my favorite part of the film. I loved how like goofy and silly Manta's goons looked with those like leather suits oh, that covered yeah. their heads. That was kind of hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, but in a good way for me. I know, it reminded me of like of a Bond film. Yeah. Like an old Bond film. Thunderball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're wearing these outfits. I'm like, you're all so threatening. Yeah. I was like, this is awesome. But <laughs> I agree with you. I love the I love the retro effect. It made me think of yeah, it was like really old submarine yeah. type of movies. Like that I thought was cool. I do love the fact that you have this advanced civilization. Mm. In technology, and this is how they built their ships. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up, um, they on Channel 4, they showed a lot of reruns of things like Thunderbirds and Stingray, like the these 1960s like puppet kids shows, <laughs> hmm. which first aired in the 60s. I don't, it's kind of weird to me now looking back that they would rerun them still, like when I was a kid in the <laughs> 90s, early noughties. Um, but they were that popular. And I really loved hmm. those shows. And it really reminded me that the design elements reminded me a lot of like Stingray stuff because there's a, you know, hmm. there's a villain ship in that show that's literally like a um, catfish. With giant eyes. It's a ship, but it literally looks like yeah. a catfish. It's amazing. <laughs> Perfect design. Yeah. I mean, frankly, some of the effects are better in those kids' shows than in the underwater stuff here. And I love like the yellow squid type subs, the bad guys pilot. Like like they looked mm. cooler than the ones yeah. in the new Avatar film, frankly. <laughs> You know, the way they like um rotate the arms to like propel themselves and they can use the arms to attack Aquaman and Aurum, that scene in particular was was really fun. Yeah, I love the design elements here of the bad guy's ship. Yeah, really cool. Those were cool. I hope oh, those were cool how they came through. It's funny as I because when you mentioned the attack, going through these different scenes made me think of um Incredibles. Yeah. I'm like this yeah. could be you could have made this into a tie-in video game and I feel like it would have fit perfectly. I'm like, oh you know, you go from Atlantis to Antarctica, you go to this yeah. um, tropical planet, you go to the sacred animal base, then you go back. I'm like, this would have been a perfect video game. But yeah. I feel like <laughs> we've covered a few spoiler specials now, uh, you and I, and we've compared some films about how, uh, with the direction and with the fact that they feel like video games. I feel like video games in particular, on a, I mean, I don't play them that much. I see a lot of trailers and stuff and I die hundreds of times on red dead redemption and the, the new star <laughs> wars survivor and <laughs> games yeah i feel you the ginger dude <laughs> um they are hard man <laughs> Ke uh cal oh. keskis there you go is that him yeah. yes um yeah. yeah i die many times with the rhino little yeah. dudes so i'm like fuck you die <laughs> yeah. mine was the darth vader scene that got oh, me yeah. like 30 times i'm like it's not that long of a fight yeah. and I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm getting at is the fact that I feel like direction styles are being really influenced uh, from video games now. Like in this one in particular, in the caves where, you know, the Aquaman and Aurum go to the green volcano place where they find the factory, <laughs> uh, you know, they're making yeah. all this green the stuff. Cal Calcium? Yeah. 
Cal- Cal- what's they call it? Cal- Cal- yeah, something, something like, that. like that. I'm like, where'd you get that? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. A separate comic book spin-off thing. Um, but like, there's there's scenes here where like Aurum is like running through caves and one of the villains are, is trying to kill him with the oct- the yellow octopus things. And like you've got these really great floating and floating cameras uh, as he's going through, like in a video game when you're trying to run away from something in a in when it kind of changes aspect ratio, uh, changes perspective kind of thing in, in the game, and like mm-hmm. or when like in the Star Wars, the latest Star Wars games, when you're sliding down and you've got to like jump the gaps and things, it just feels yes. like games are influencing movies now do you get that or am i talking nonsense <laughs> I, no 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 talking nonsense i got major video game yeah. vibes from this so like just the fact that they uh, went to a secret under, underwater base the fact that they had the yellow tentacle ship was trying to attack and then you know uh, aquaman had to grab the giant crane thing that you had you know to take it out like that seemed like something out of a cut scene that you know hit the crane for them to take it out at the right timing get the crane hit the hit that so it takes him out and then even going through the jungle i'm like that seems like something yeah you would do to go to the secret base yeah which of course apparently you can't be seen <laughs> using human technology because all the greenhouse gases and <laughs> yeah. whatever i'm like of course it is yeah i yeah I feel like in that scene in particular, when they're running through the forest, I was like, yeah, this is a lot of filler stuff because they have yeah. no story here. <laughs> this is basically a buddy movie, you know, buddy cop This film. is a buddy cop fish movie. Yeah. And, you know, it's been chopped and changed so many times. And this mm. scene oh. just feels like absolute filler to just to get to the next scene. Um, I mean, it was fun. Like, I love the giant, giant uh, locusts that were trying to kill them. That was uh, funny and fun. Mm. But yeah, very fillery to me. King builds bridges. Yeah, <laughs> it's a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, I think their relationship it was a, a highlight for the movie. Yeah, I feel like it could have been better though. Like some of the jokes fell flat a little bit for me. Was it the cockroach? It was the cockroach, wasn't it? I kind of like the cockroach bit, but like this one where which just looked it kind of went beyond the line of silliness when Orm is like running and he's like, I've never ran before, and he's got like his arms <laughs> outstretched. And Aquaman's like, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like I've never run before. I'm like, no, you just like you just look like a twat right now to get a joke. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I I love the fact he run faster than him. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's I can't run properly apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's struggling because obviously, you know, Jason Moa didn't get a uh, didn't get Jack for this role this time. Oh right. Unlike the first one, he never takes his top off. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you see him where he, the, you see he is putting on the muscle suit. Oh yeah, the visible one. Aquaman yeah. muscle so I'm like, okay. You don't want to get jacked, that's fine. Neither does Homelander. <laughs> yeah, so some of the jokes fell a bit first base and mildly mm-hmm. funny. Like nothing like laugh out loud funny. Nothing like, oh that was so good. Yeah. More like <laughs> fish talk. <laughs> yeah. I think uh one of the really interesting influences for me that I saw in this film was from lord of the rings like the demon villain dude was like a very green sauron for me like from yes, yes. yeah and like very minus uh morgul um like the green and black castle mm-hmm. from lord of the rings with the design mm-hmm. and uh elements there when you when we have like the backstory stuff yeah, where the like the Nazgul live in in Lord of the Rings, that was kind of really interesting and fun. So all that was fun to see, and I liked mm-hmm. the possession storyline with Black Manta. I think yeah, he, he does amazing in that role. So they were mm. teasing this like Sauron like figure supervillain for like a long time, and there's some really interesting CG design as well. And you've got like you know the devil on one shoulder and like on each of their shoulders when Aquaman and Aurum are like are grasping the fork. That was cool. But then when the dude arrives, Aquaman literally throws his trident once and kills him. Is that it? 
I'm like, yep. seriously? What? <laughs> that was so disappointing to me. Like, you've teased this guy for pretty much most of the film. Like, he's l- literally possessed and, and making Black Manta David Kane. Um, I think his name is, like, mm. literally going beyond crazy at times in a kid's comic book film. <laughs> mm. Oh, with nearly a nearly a baby death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to match the comics, by the way. But then to literally wait all that time and to for him to literally live, literally thirty seconds. I'm like, so less than that. I'm I'm like, really? Again, that screamed. We need. It just screamed. The film's a mess. <laughs> that annoyed me too. I was like, you could have at least give him a fight. Yeah, like. Do another try and fight in a different style, but not just to kill him in just two. By the way, there's by the way, there's there's this massive kingdom with zombies. The king is the brother of the old king. He's yeah. quite powerful. He's been influencing this entire movie, and you took him out with a second spear attack. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and all all, all these people died again, or they're already dead. I guess because they're zombies, mm. but that was just over so quickly, and we've seen that before. Yeah, even with the big scale action stuff, like it just felt in terms of the direction and like how things are cut out, it it just feels like the geography of what the hell is going on just isn't there. Like where people mm. are in relation to the scene, it it just felt really frustrating. It just felt like they were just throwing stuff at the screen. And like, okay, this person needs a moment. This piece person needs a moment. There's no like cohesion yeah, yeah. to create an action scene, which is a real shame because you've got some really great like one to one hand to hand combat stuff, as we've said, like between Aquaman and and Black Manta. That was really well done, so good. And it just feels like they put all their effort into those scenes, which was amazing from James Wan. And then like the big spectacle stuff was just kind of just left to the you know, the special effects dudes. And I mean, they're, you know, we've said in the past that they, those guys are kind of overworked now. And like, I feel like there's so many directors out there or, or just the the way films get made now with these big studios is the fact that they just leave a lot of the work to those guys and they don't get a lot of mm. help from the director and the producers of like how they want the film to look and play out in scenes. Um, to make them feel good and and work for the story, so it's just really frustrating in that aspect. It is, um, and even going back to like the one to one action stuff, and in terms of the story, like why not have like Black Manta team up maybe with because he's not possessed at that moment, team up with Aquaman and Orem, and like you have a a four way fight, and like the Green Sauron like literally owning all three of them for a moment yeah that would have been awesome and like really i would have gained a lot more respect for the movie if they kind of did something more epic like that because i know they can do it because the epic scale is there in the first one don't go so generic yeah that's but you know don't just go what are the easy well what's i can't really have a word for it but you know just don't go for the paycheck don't go for the money shot just don't always just go for the money shot make something a little bit different. And you're right. I would have loved to have seen Black Manor team up just briefly against, mm. uh, I just forgot his name, too. It's their screen, Sauron. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is, like, they didn't go, they went generic that way, but Black Manta died, which I wasn't expecting mm. that, that he kept to his, his mission that I'll never help you, I'll never team up with you. Yeah, that was a good moment like, for me that, he would rather die than be saved by Aquaman. I, I feel like yeah. Yaya uh, Abdul Mateen, I think that's his name, the second, <laughs> yeah. is great yeah. in the role. Just really like he has a really great evil presence to him. And, and you know, nothing yeah. about this film is subtle <laughs> at all. And you don't <laughs> want subtle performances here at all because it would just feel really strange. You know, I feel like, yeah, a lot of people are shitting on this film, but I mean, like, this ain't a fucking Oscar film, people. <laughs> like, no. This is a comic book film. It's no. supposed to be fun and enjoyable. And there's definitely enjoyable moments in here. It's just story-wise. And again, all the controversy 
around it has hurt this film a lot big time which is a real real shame because i really like the first one it's not how i think the dc should have been sent off no yeah. but out of everything that we got last year this was still their better option they had i i don't think the flash would have been really good to finish it off with that no. george clooney scene oh, i don't know why they did that i'm like no one was asking for george clooney to come back no 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 one asked yeah. this like it would have been a bigger pop if it was Robert Patterson. Yeah. That would have been the bigger... <gasps> but then at the same time, it would be a massive sigh. I'm like, oh no, don't ruin that universe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, he's now joined the yeah. DCU. I said him on my review too, I'm like, this movie kind of reinforced me to just go back and watch the first one. Yeah. And maybe not watch this again. Yeah. First one's a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, and a little bit... Better humor, better direction. I guess maybe because, well, besides the controversy, that they knew that this was going to be continuing. Yeah. I mean, they weren't good. I mean, Warner Brothers were never going to, like, you know, put a big tax right off for this one. That would be crazy. They, they would have a <sighs> huge uh, backlash for that, especially what they did with um, mm. Batgirl. So. <laughs> I know, which I still don't understand that when the fact you have the villain. Mm. playing brendan fraser who's currently going through a career resurgence at the moment <laughs> yeah that makes no sense <laughs> we'll get we've got you more eyes on the project yeah. and you had michael keaton back as batman i mean oh, i feel like that guy is so unlucky at the moment like keaton's batman not it was supposed to be an aquaman nope supposed to be in batgirl nope <laughs> uh, yeah and only the flash survives no. <laughs> that's right uh, and then he you know, he appears in Morbius. <laughs> oh, really? Does he? I didn't bother with that. Really? That's Marvel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, but I mean like yeah, yeah. His roles that aren't working out for him at the moment. Vulture. Vulture. Yeah. No, you don't need to go watch Morbius. That's uh, that's a lot worse now. <laughs> a lot worse. Good guess. <laughs> yeah, it just it all came came to an end mm-hmm. and even at the ending it's it's a bit like as we, as we said it like the cgi looked bad and he's like yeah. i am aquaman i'm like yeah so is iron man <laughs> you ripped off a movie that's about 12 13 years yeah, old now which did it way better but at least he did it in yeah. his jason momoa way you know because <laughs> he's basically playing himself frankly yeah. let's be honest <laughs> he he is his yeah. entire movie is just an elevator version of his personality yeah. <sighs> and you're you're also right in saying i think there's a scene when after after he breaks out norm right in the desert yeah and they're underwater and they're like oh my god like a uh, black man who's gonna go st- go to steal the child. Yeah, like that scene where they're there for one second and right on the ship, still having the conversation. I felt like that felt like a skip. Yeah, a big skip. Yeah, I felt that a few times. Like that scene in particular where they find out the black man has stolen their child. I think yes, like the performances are. The performances are very heightened and you kind of need that for this film but i think they went a bit too far <laughs> or there was a problem with the editing here when it, yeah. it, it just felt like everyone had their chance to say no and then cut to another mm. one saying no <laughs> right. i just found that it was sad but then they kept cutting to all the different characters i'm like oh, this is getting funny now like you need to stop <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, it's like oh of course the dad didn't really die yeah <laughs> yeah i mean come on like you gotta kill someone people <laughs> yeah. let's have some emotional weight <laughs> no one died except for uh green Saron. yeah the poor dude was alive for 30 seconds <sighs> yep no one else lost their life <laughs> even even the fact that they attacked atlantis yeah Actually, no, sorry. The one person who did die was the first guy at the start who got eaten by the technical. Oh, yeah, yeah. No idea who he was yeah. called, but sure. Random Explorer yeah, 1. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is some good stuff here. I I think my favorite scenes were probably all the desert action stuff. Like, I love the horror-inspired mm. bad guys in the fisherman desert prison. Very horror. 
like a very like evil dead like pan's labyrinth look to the goons mm-hmm. for me with like with a bit of star wars in there of course uh, for me, it was definitely the best action scene, which is kind of funny for an Aquaman film that the best action scenes <laughs> is on are on, all on land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big problem with the action scenes underwater is the fact that they were they just didn't feel like they were underwater at all. <laughs> no, like I think uh, we're kind of forever did a better. Oh yeah, down the water scene. Yeah, um, but. I I will I will agree with you. I I I really did like the scene when um Norm he get t- touches the water for the first time. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and he just pops up the after uh, in the um uh, the water and just attacks him. And I just love I love how Aquaman's like, oh, I'm here to save you, cast away. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that was a good joke. Yeah. Yeah, I just love that over the head shot, that bird's eye view shot of like he's in the water in Jesus mode, Jesus skinny mode. You know, the water comes, washes over him, a little bit of slow mo there, and then he's mm. ripped. Patrick Wilson. And Jack. Yeah. I think Patrick Wilson does a great job here. But again, like his performance doesn't really correlate to what to how he was like in the first film. It's like he's not pissed off or super evil no. <laughs> against Aquaman at all. It's like, you know, he literally imprisoned you for like five years, stole your kingdom. <laughs> stole your wife. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you <laughs> on your quest. Yeah. Oh, even the scene with Black Manta. That's like, where it was like so you stole, his, you stole his kingdom, you stole his wife. Shame on you, Aquaman. Shame on you. I was like, <laughs> That's cringe. Yeah, yeah. I really like Patrick Wilson, though. I think uh, he is the one performance where he is toning it down a little bit compared to everyone else. Again, like has some great action stuff, that one in particular. And even just the action when they're riding the whatever they're called, the scorpion things. Desert animals. I think that was actually really well done. I also like how they're like, oh, no, if they see you, this could mean out of war, which they do see him. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting as well. Again, another frustration, like towards the end with Patrick Wilson's character as Norm. Like there's a moment where with Dolph Lundgren, like Dolph Lundgren is being attacked by like one of the they're climbing the castle. Yeah. The green castle. He's like, nah, I'm gonna ditch you. Yeah. And then you get this great like slow-mo shot of him like s- having a slight smile on his face while Dolph Lundgren mm. is being attacked by the zombie, which was great, and then he walks off. And I'm like, mm. yes, yes, let's have some evil Patrick Wilson for a bit. Um, but no, a few minutes later, 30 seconds later, he comes back to save Dolph Lundgren. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, that's so Two cliche. <laughs> I know. I, I, I think only pretty much there and whether the, the, um, the Pirate Bay scene is where he's a little bit evil. Yeah, that's about it, really. That's it. Martin Freeman is the fish. <laughs> Really? <laughs> or Kingfish, if you will. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and I like how, how do you know about this place? So every king in the past has given a blind eye. I'm like, ah, I'm not now. Yeah, um, like, you're all stuffed yourselves now. <laughs> it's interesting with the buddy cop, like buddy movie storyline. You know, I always kind of enjoy that type of story where a good guy has to team up with a bad guy to achieve their mission. Doesn't really make a lot of sense here. Just go to the library or the underwater library and find out. Well, yeah, do some investigating yourself, Aquaman. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So that didn't really make a lot of sense. But the the line that's kind of was really interesting and funny and frustrating at the same time was the fact that Aquaman says, there's only one man that can help me on this mission. And I'm like, is Superman in this movie? Awesome. And then he's like, Great. my brother Orm. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> Not Superman, your friend <laughs> from the Justice no, League? Flash. Who's way more powerful. <laughs> yeah, or Batman, yeah. who would have been able to find that island yeah. straight away. That's why I feel like Batman, one of the Batmans, was supposed to be the other like buddy in the buddy movie, but they just changed it mm-hmm. to Orm and just kept it as a closed off aquaman film oh i probably the most scene i was expecting to see batman in was going to be at the ending then yeah. he might be in the in the crowd and been like <laughs> yeah good for you mate 
No, but now, like, imagine if, like, like, just imagine if the last shot would have been all of them at the watchtower mm. watching it. All along the watchtower. <laughs> yeah. Good film. On the watchtower. Imagine <laughs> them watching it. How cool that would have been That if that was the final shot. Yeah, that would have been awesome. But, uh, nope. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nicole yeah. Kidman is in this <laughs> as yeah. the yes. exposition woman. Yeah, that's about it from her, to be honest, which is really disappointing. You've got like an amazing Oscar winning actress and she's just her mum for a bit and just exposition woman. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, there is a Seventh Kingdom. I uh, guess. And this is highly volatile material that we keep in a vault that can begin global warming that, uh, yeah, that we just keep. And I'm not going to tell. Also, I really miss my husband. <laughs> Tell uh, Norm I love him mm. because I'm never going to see him again. Even like Dolph Lundgren did more. Yeah. yeah, let's get the guy who's famous for saying, I will break you, R- rather mm. than using an Oscar winning actress. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. You don't know that. Have uh, Dolph Lundgren stay on the entire story. Yeah. Why is he ginger? I don't understand. <laughs> Nothing against gingers. I love gingers, but... <laughs> It's not a great look. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know either. I don't know why. And just the floating hair. Like, oh my God. Yeah, I quite like the fact that in the first Aquaman, they, they make a real conscious effort to create these like underwater bubbles so they can talk to each other. <laughs> and they just completely yeah. like, nah, that's stupid. Let's just have them talk normally underwater. <laughs> yeah, that's completely taken away. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I guess they can just talk normal now. Yeah. I guess they, you never needed the bubble. Yeah, I, I guess that's the, the problem <laughs> as well, is that I feel like they never really established a, a real good look and tone visually of how the underwater stuff was going to work. And I think they just made the decision in this one and the Justice League stuff as well, is that let's just have a bit of wavy hair and a few bubbles here and there but for the most part let's just have them talking normally with no particular sound effect or they was just struggling to find what would sound good and look good for a long time Mm. and they just were like nah let's just have some basic effects that make them seem like Mm. they're underwater a little bit and go from there (laughs) flowy flowy hair and that's that's actually another thing that brown is Compared to Aquaman, compared to the Justice League movies, uh, Atlantis looks a lot darker, and yeah. Mira is wearing more armor. Yeah, when she's in in fighting mode, like wouldn't that armor would have been really helpful with the fact that Atlantis is being attacked? Yeah, I guess like I don't know whether they were. I mean, there's some like costume in films like these. They always want to develop the looks of these characters, don't they? They don't want to like keep the same costumes all the time. Like you see that with Marvel all the time, they they've always wanted they always want like a new suit, don't they? But even though Amber Heard was in it very brief, briefly, she didn't really have a new suit. No, yeah, again, like they didn't really bother <laughs> with her character at all. <laughs> like, yeah, but let's chop her stuff down to maximum effect that we can make this film work. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. and that's it. Yeah. That's all you're getting, Amber. Screw you. Nothing more. <laughs> Screw you. I work for Depp. <laughs> and, and, and I think another thing is that with this movie, which it's going to be sad because it is what it is, it's going to be another major what if. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, what, what's the original cut of the film? What was it meant to be? Yeah. Where was Batman meant to fit? Because, you know, Warner Brothers is not going to include any of the deleted scenes. No. Because they have Batman in it. <laughs> no. Which is really annoying. And I think also with the fact that we've had the announcement that James Gunn is taking over the DCU pretty early into the post-production, I would imagine, on this film. So, or even make, and with all the reshoots and stuff. So, I mean, that's got to affect you. That's got to affect your performance and your work ethic that, like, I, you know, these characters are not, well, I would imagine these characters are not really going to continue into the new universe. Mm. I would be. I don't think we're going to see Jane. I don't think we're going to see Jason Momoa again as Aquaman. I mean, are we even going to see Aquaman again? Full stop. I don't know. 
Well, from um, the current lineup that James Gunn mentioned, no. Yeah. There's no mention of Aquaman. He's really exploring different characters, which I'm all for. Absolutely, yeah. And I just think it just probably just sucks the fact that it's going to be again be a very long time before we get a Justice League movie. Yeah. I mean, like the Zack Snyder one is enjoyable to a certain extent. I think there's some really good stuff in there. But again, like you have the Zack Snyder problem. The Snyder Cut. You go watch the Snyder Cut. Yeah, the Snyder Cut one. Like the big problem with that is just so long. I'm like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) We don't need to see 10 different angles of of Wonder Woman making tea with Alfred. I'm like, really? (laughs) Let's move on. (laughs) I've always thought about going back to watching that movie, and every time I go to, I'm like, I really don't want to kill four hours of time nah. <laughs> rewatching this, and I don't want to watch half and watch another half later. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, I know there's someone listening right now go, "Oh, but you'll binge, you know, ten episodes of a Disney Plus TV show in one go." I'm like, yes, because they're really good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Apart from Secret Invasion, obviously. But uh, <laughs> we don't talk about it. Well, actually, no, as we're recording, Echo is about to drop. Yes, I am excited for that. Like, really interesting strategy for Marvel as well. The, the fact that they're dropping it all in one go, um, which yep. is interesting. I don't know whether that's just they just want it out and out the way. Because <laughs> yeah. there were reports of problems, I think, on that show. I mean, yes. as a whole, they've released literally on TV, on broadcast TV, of a whole clip, a whole fight scene between Echo and Daredevil, <laughs> mm. which is interesting. Tell me, how are they going to talk to each other? Um, <laughs> sign language? <laughs> <laughs> Daredevil was blind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't text WhatsApp. <laughs> we'll have a WhatsApp sequence. <laughs> <laughs> He's blind. He can't text. Well, there'll be uh, uh, Braille. On, he's got a Braille phone. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Braille phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was my first thing where I was like, oh, Daredevil's going to be an Echo. I'm like, huh. He's got Echo vision, though, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> that's that. That's very much from the only way I can think of it is like how they're going to talk to each other. Like, are they only fighting because they don't know who's there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Um, so, final thoughts then, Lee? Like, final thoughts on this film? And, like, are you excited for the DC U from Gun? I'm excited for the James Gunn era yeah. of the DC. I feel that James Gunn is a great architect. If him, he's at the helm, just like Kevin Feige, I don't think they could have got a better person to overlook it all. Um, I'm glad they are. Mm-hmm. I know there is some debate, but I'm, do, I'm glad they're starting with Superman. I'm glad mm-hmm. they're going to be doing like Tom Holland's Spider-Man approach to it as yeah, he's Superman. Here's, let's go. He yeah. de- we don't need to see him going through can- uh, Smallville again. Yeah. We don't need to know him. all that. He's just... Boom. I think it's meant to be like year two or year one cool. of him being Superman, which I'm really glad for. And, you know, some of the lineup that like, you know, a Supergirl movie mm-hmm. I'm all for. I just I'm looking forward to some uh, um an overall arcing narrative that stays true. Yeah. And doesn't Oh look, that didn't make a big box office. Oh, let's just change the plan. Or yeah. I know you're making this movie, but you know, we're doing this over here. You can do just whatever you want. Yeah. So with this film, like there's some good stuff in here. I love all the retro designs and there's some some good action scenes on land. <laughs> and <laughs> not in the water um but yeah i'm excited for james gunn's dcu dcu uh, sorry no e <laughs> um yeah, yeah just dcu yeah and the fact that with superman legacy and um you're going to have other superheroes in there as well um which is really interesting mm. um but he's caragotically said that they will service superman's story so don't expect like a spin off tv show or a spin-off film like you know then they're not in there to just set them up for their own show or or film they're here for superman 
um, for his story, mm. which is really encouraging. Um, and I feel like that's a great change of pace that James Gunn is focusing on. Just the idea of like, we're just going to make the best film that we can make and then see where we go from there. Yes, I guess there is a an outline, I guess, um, with where the wider story is going. But I feel like his mentality is like, yeah, let's make the best film we can make. Yeah, see where it kind of goes. Um, and also I'm excited for like his vision on his animated shows as well. Because I think animation is... is Commandos? Yeah, Commandos. Yeah, that looks really good. The concept art that he released. And the fact that he said that the animated characters will go into live action as well. And obviously Disney have yes. played around with that uh, type of thing in the Star Wars universe to some mm. good effect and some bad, um, I would say. Um, there's a there's always those kind of annoying people that like redesign <laughs> the live action characters are like, yeah, it should look like this. I'm like, yeah, for no apparent reason. Well, you're not no. on the movie or the show. So <laughs> yeah. No, just keep with the normal design. Yeah. That that'd be that'd be good. I, I agree with you that um and I'm glad that Superman Legacy they're just going in that just to make a good Superman film. And like very much like uh, I remember James Gunn saying that with the first guy in the galaxy that Kevin Feige basically gave him full reign. Yeah. It just basically had to include, a, include I think, a cameo of Thanos and Finney Stone, and that's it. Yeah. And the rest was fully up to him. So if he takes that same approach in a Superman legacy, they're like, you know, he's just going to be, he's just going to finish here. He's just going to do this. The rest we can go nuts on. I mean, the fact that he's writing and directing it yeah. to kick off this universe, you couldn't, I don't think you could have a better person. Yeah, super stoked for that film, for sure. July 2025? Yes. <laughs> Screw 2024. <laughs> Deadpool 3, though. <laughs> you mean Deadpool No Way Home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which I just said this to, um, I've just recently in my last episode, was this year is the least superhero film. Yeah, which is going to feel weird and interesting to see how that feels really and will be kind of quite refreshing i think for general mm. like film goers but um yeah weirdly though like there's there's like three sony marvel films next uh, this year yeah <laughs> which is not encouraging yeah. none of them look good <laughs> craven the hunter madam web and venom, venom three. three yeah I can just imagine Sony being like, oh, it's my time to shine, asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, nah, it's not me. Nah, just end it now. You're ri- yeah. literally running on idea fumes because you don't have Spider-Man. <laughs> I wish they did. Yeah. Like, cool, you're going to have, you're going to make a character of Madam Web that has these multidimensional powers and you can't include Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to make it anyway. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, a movie nobody asked for. Nobody asked for a Meta Web movie. No, no one. I like uh, Dakota Johnson. I think she's a fabulous actress. You know, Sydney Sweeney's great as well. It's just the idea here, the because like Madam Web in the comics is like a, a like a witch type character. Is that right? <laughs> the lady. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure I'll see that one to be honest. <laughs> uh, I sadly will, and I'm right. I, most thing I, I can already see happening in it is the scenes of it where they're all wearing their outfits. Those are the scenes. Yeah, just for five minutes each. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see that. That's it. <laughs> yep, and that's all you're going to give us, Sony. Yeah. So it, it feels like now going into 2024, 2025, especially that. This could be more of DC's time now and not Marvel necessarily. Mm. The MCU is going through a tough time at the moment. We'll see what happens with Deadpool 3. You know, they you know, Marvel are having a well earned break and pause to really figure mm. their shit out. Whereas I think DC could be taking over maybe 
do you do you reckon that could be possible? And you've got Matt Reeves Batman Two, the Batman Two coming as well. We don't really know much about that. And yes. you've got the Penguin TV show, which looks really cool. Yes. which could come this year. Uh, it's meant to. I actually dropped a short yesterday about that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> check that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I think <clears throat> the Batman Two is meant to come out next year as well. And I think if you've got Superman Legacy and Batman Two, I feel like they're a surefire. Um, hits, mm. um, and on the flip side, they're going up against Cat Four, Thunderbolts, and Blade. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> with Blade, I mean, will that film ever get made? I don't know. Yeah. There's no direct. I don't I think there's a director well, at the moment. Like, I think, I think there's a director. Mahershala Ali has been tempted to walk away from that film, and you've got like Cat Four. There's been reports of again extensive reshoots. So I feel like this could be DC's time to really take over in terms of quality over Marvel. I think it is. But at the same time, as much as I think it would be DC taking over, I believe that another thing that will be, a, not, not saying DC will be too late on, I feel like there's also going to be a research, well, not a resurgence, but a video game movies. Video game movies right. and TV shows are going to be the next big thing to take over Hollywood. Do you reckon? Last of Us, Super Mario movie, Twisted Metal, Gran Turismo, mm. they've all been solid. So yeah. if Hollywood still ca- catches on that wind, yeah, I think it's going to be next. Because we've got Fallout TV show around the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Twisted Metal season two. We've got the God of War TV show. <sighs> The Amazon, <laughs> that I feel like you can't stuff that up. No, you can't. <laughs> when Boaz was on the show, he he always mentions God of War sometime. Where he he loves the God of War movie uh, games. Um, he can't stop playing them. <laughs> yeah, they're incredible. Yeah. Um, but as much as I'm a Marvel fan, I feel like 2025. If those are the only two DC films coming out, mm. will encapsulate. Marvel. Out of all three films, I feel like Thunderbolts will be the most interesting because mm. it's the most different film out of all three. Yeah. Certainly not like power level interesting because like they're all just kind of strong, <laughs> those characters. Like yeah. you've got Ghost as well that can, you know, go through walls and shit like that. But that's about mm. it. But like they're really interesting, witty, funny characters. And you've got Florence Pugh in there who's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kate the Bishop. You got Bucky. <laughs> yeah. And Bucky, and I remember when they first announced that, I thought, yes, this is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And unlike Suicide Squad, it's going to make a lot more sense yeah. having these characters together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that will be the Marvel movie next year if they – uh, can find someone to replace the villain. Yeah, Stephen Young has left recently. My my uh, dream pick is Henry Cavill. <laughs> yeah, I, again, that's just the really interesting thing with Henry Cavill as well is that with the whole DCU announcement with James Gunn, because obviously he left uh, the Witcher TV show to come back as Superman because he was expecting to be in a Shazam sequel or come back as a well, basically reprise the man of steel again in in some capacity mm-hmm. but then when james gunn came in he was like nah i'm not i want to recast and cast my own superman so he was just stuck in limbo the poor guy and now you've got liam hensworth as the witcher <laughs> which is a bit like really <laughs> yeah i feel i feel bad for him but but he's got to amongst all that he has been able to he will be appearing in the Amazon's uh, Warhammer 40,000 40, 40, TV yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, and he's a massive nerd. Yeah. He's one of us. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen those uh, videos of him literally building a PC <laughs> on his I, own? That's funny. <laughs> I know, and there's just comments of women throwing themselves at him. <laughs> All he's done is built a PC. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, th- I always love the interview. Where so uh, this lady's interviewing him and another guy, and they're like, "Oh, you know, what are you doing in downtime?" And he's like, "Oh, uh, Warhammer Four Thousand is my is my jam." And then the other guy's like, "Oh, what army are you building at the moment?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm building this." He's like, 
oh, oh cool he's like let's talk after this yeah yeah because for a long time like he was too shy that um people would care about like his warhammer um obsession like he didn't feel comfortable talking about it until in you know recent years that he's like yeah i'm hmm. i'm gonna talk about this this is awesome so which is yeah. great for him <laughs> and, and he's also a big wow player too yeah what a full craft yeah. <laughs> yeah uh yeah so hopefully and you've got argyle coming up soon for for henry cavill yeah uh which yes with the flat top and he looks like he's from tekken <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look great, that film, if I'm honest, but the trailers aren't giving too much away for that. We are relating an episode to that one later this year, so wait for that one. Uh, Matthew Vaughn films. <laughs> Looks weird and different. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, hey, we just reviewed a Matthew Vaughn film right. not too long ago. Uh, which one was that? Perfect plug. Uh, X-Men. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant on your show. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> No, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Um, yeah, looking at the table for that, I'm like, we were, well, I was quite harsh on that. <laughs> Way down the list. <laughs> Shit. Lee ain't going to be at it. Tornado. And Tornado Man. Yeah. Really useful. Yeah. Sorry. Well dressed. Yes. Tornado Man. <laughs> <laughs> Got to remember that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think we will leave it there, people. Lee, you have been amazing as always. Uh, we'll probably see him again soon this year. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> wink, wink. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Um, it's time to say goodbye. It's goodbye from Lee. See you guys. Thank you for having me, man. And it's goodbye from me. I'm going to try and erase all the Amber Heard scenes in my mind from this film <laughs> and basically watch <laughs> the first film with uh, who's a good actress, Scarlett Johansson, in the role instead. Half mirror, half Black Widow for Aquaman in that role. How good would that be? Should have nailed that. Just a bit of chat GBT in there. Create that for me. That'd be awesome. Bye bye. Yeah. And that's a better movie. (laughs) That's it for spoilers, guys. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. But don't stop there. Get involved and tell me what your thoughts are about this film. Send us a DM or comment on Instagram and TikTok at Film vs. Film Podcast for X at FVF underscore podcast. Plus, we are now on YouTube, so hit that like button and comment there. If you do, I'll give you a shout out on the next episode. Remember, please leave us a five star review and subscribe. Pod signing off. Mm-hmm.